Hello and welcome to See What She Can Do Conversations. I'm Tina Finelli and I'm here with Caroline Wiley. Hello. And Lisa Dunbar. Hey there. We're here to talk to you today about who we are, why we started See What She Can Do, and what you can expect from our podcast. So first off, Caroline Wiley, she's co-founder of See What She Can Do, and I want to flip it over to you to talk a little bit about who you are, the impact of sport, and how we connected, like right up until that fateful moment where we had that cup of coffee in Frank's shop, and how that kind of became something. Yes, exactly. Well, my world has always revolved around sport, and my happy place is sport, and I... um, you know, always go to it when I need to feel grounded and or really kind of feel like I belong to 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 a, a community in my peeps. Um, so really, for me, I uh, have worked professionally in the sport and rec field for over 20 years and uh, got a master's degree in that f- in the field of recreation. And most of my research s- kind of focused around looking at the issues that women and girls face uh, in getting involved in getting getting the chance to participate in sport and really a lot of it focused around understanding why it is that women and girls continue to face really significant barriers to get to get in the game get on the field um, and be taken seriously for what they can do once they get on that field and you know get in the game so for me it's it's always you know and now that I have two teenage daughters it's really shape me even more in terms of understanding you know what what that represents for women and girls in terms of uh being athletes and participants so for me you know over the 25 years that i've been in the industry since doing my research a lot of uh, some there's been some progress but a lot of it has been you know challenge challenging and uh, we're still talking a lot about you know, the issues that women face. And for me, it was like, okay, I'm tired. I don't want to, I don't want to hear the conversation about what we're facing. Let's do something. Yeah, let's absolutely. invest in, in women. Let's invest in each other and let's lift each other up. Okay. So let's dig deep. What is your favorite sport and what's your least favorite sport and why? Wow. I don't know if I'd have, a, I, uh, I would <laughs> say this is a tough question, man. Uh, in most days, it would be um, walking. Just love to walk. Yeah. Love to move. Um, I've walked, you know, a walk is in my day every day. Well, and I love, like, I love that she's considering that a sport because I'm the same. I feel like walking. <laughs> yeah, and hiking, absolutely. Like, you can really oh, yeah. get your heart going. Oh, and for sure. You feel good. It's social. Yeah. Well, look, we see her walking all around the neighborhood, right? Yeah. Right. Hello. She yeah. knows everybody walking down the street. Well, this is how you get to meet people. You get out, you see neighbors, you say, hey. You know, it, it's what makes your community what it is. Well, and the joy yeah. is that we all live within like a half a kilometer yeah. of each other. So yeah. sometimes yeah. I'll see Lisa walking by well, the Tim Hortons That's with how Lisa and I met, right? We yeah. were just walking. Oh, yeah. 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 We would say hello I not know that. on a regular basis. And it's like, okay, if we're going to say hello, we need, at least need to say yeah. Who are, are you? Say, who are you? Okay, but when you walk with her, you're kind of chopped liver because everybody knows who she is. No, no you're what? like, where's your other guy, your partner? I'm like, hello, I'm right here. No, I, I think Lisa would. Oh yeah, she, Lisa tops it. I was about to say, I. I well, you've been in Aurora been? for how many up, years? I grew up in Aurora. You are forever Aurora girl. Born right? up here, right? Yeah, and in fact, yeah. your parents. Like, your house was just down the road from the snap building here, wasn't it? Yeah, my you mom grew up? grew up as a child oh, in the house, like, literally three doors over Wow, on See? the street. It's kind of well, cool. it goes around, comes around. So Pretty we're in the snap then, think, studio though. right now doing our podcast, and it's a beautiful place to be. And uh, yeah. we're really thrilled to be able to yeah. kind of connect here. And Okay, Lisa, so, well, she never answered her question. I so really, she dodged it. I liked it. Well, I did say my <laughs> favorite is walking. I don't know. Actually, honestly, I don't know if I have a least favorite in the sense that, okay, maybe I should say my least favorite is is stretching after walking <laughs> okay. because I know I am supposed yeah. to do it. Welcome to the Everybody Club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Really nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Catches up with you, though, doesn't it? And it gets yes, harder it does. as you go. To the, my uh, massage therapist um, and physiotherapist, he's like, okay, you got to stretch. Yeah, especially as <laughs> especially we, as we, you know. Yeah. Get less stretchy. Cross the 50-yard <laughs> line, so to speak. 
Okay, Lisa. I don't know what you're talking tell about. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I didn't actually, I don't know how I didn't know that you guys met walking, but okay, tell us about yourself. <laughs> all the times we've been sitting around the all table, All the times right? we've been sitting around the table. Okay, beyond the fact that around this table there's really something special. Like, there is a twinship thing happening here. Yes. We are all... Little known fact. About yes. to see what she can we do are all you. twins. Yep. Lisa is the queen twin because she's an identical and apparently those are far better than... Wow. You know, well, it's because they share 95% <laughs> of the genes, right? Yeah. Like, so, you know, it's a higher number. Tell us about yourself, my love. <laughs> I'm a twin. Yeah. Like you yeah. and you. <laughs> um, I Well, professionally, I'm a marketer and I was built a career in building marketing brands and strategy. Um which is awesome, and I've had really great experience in a, a bunch of different industries. Um, but I'm also a lifelong advocate of sport and like the strength and power of sport. And I know we sit around the table all the time and talk about mm-hmm. like how sport has influenced your life. Um, how has it influenced your life? What's the biggest so impact So many ways, it's made? right? Like I think like even in business, I, I am the queen of analogy and there is nothing better than sitting amongst a team of people building a strategic plan for a business, an idea, yeah. whatever, and make analogy an analogy to a game sheet, right? Like you wouldn't go into a competitive game or sport without a game sheet, a plan, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it just, they intersect all the time. So and because I've grown up and always been active and participating in sport, it's so natural to make that analogy, right? And it's powerful because yeah. it has, it, like, you think, like, through the journey of your life, how, I do anyway, how much sport has had an impact, right? Everything from, mm-hmm. you, know, you guys were probably fairly similar in high school. You played everything. Yeah. Like, even sports yeah. you didn't know. That was of. the joy of high school. You could play everything. You played right? everything, yeah. right? Yeah. If you were athletic somewhat or even a little bit, you got to make a team. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I played soccer. Yeah. I was terrible. Yeah. But I could run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that yeah. was it. And you had long yeah. legs. I'm sure you could outrun everybody her. that was out there. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> handle the ball like, at all. You but. can't tell with Lisa sitting here, but how tall are you? 5'10"? You're five ten, yeah. I'm five four. How about yeah. you? Five four. Okay, there proud you go. of it. You're she only five four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We always look up them. Okay. Fun size. My <laughs> sister would say fun size. Yeah. Fun size. Is your sister the I'm same well, height as you? Exactly the same. That's amazing. Yeah, my sister's not the same height as me. I, I would like to think she's shorter, but <laughs> okay. So <laughs> often one... people prefer vertically challenged. Short people don't like so. Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Vert- oh, people don't like short. Well, vertically I am short, challenged. so I can say short. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> okay, so, so I think what about is your... It, I, oh, I, was I would say, in. like, a, um, what's really... Like, you think about the different phases of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in high school, you play every sport you can. And I would say that gave me the confidence going to university, totally different environment, to walk onto a field hockey field and try out for the varsity team. Mm-hmm. And, I didn't and at the know same time, you tried to try for the like, I played, and then I was playing volleyball as well, and then you have to choose, yeah. right? But, like, that's the, it's the platform for... You never have any fear of meeting new people. Yeah. Because, or trying new things. Or trying things. new things, yeah. right? Because yeah. it gives you confidence, right? Yeah. And as a mom, I'm a mom of a daughter as well, um, who was pretty quiet when she was younger and was a little bit shy. And so she's since picked up uh, gymnastics as a sport, it's changed her confidence, no question. It's amazing, so, like, right? you just keep seeing the power, right? Yeah. So, okay, so you talked about new sports. Okay, what is the thing that you tried that you were most scared to try? Oh, I'm mostly not afraid to try anything. Oh. I think because because I've played lots of different yeah. sports, I would say, like, sometimes I'm a bit competitive, so mm-hmm. I like to know the game, the sport, and, like, the tricks of Before the trade going into it. Yeah. So I can compete, but I, don't th- I would say there's not any sport I wouldn't try. Okay, so I'm going to rephrase that. Uh, what is the sport that you tried that you never thought in your youth you would ever give a go? Oh, ball hockey, for sure. Yeah? For sure. <laughs> cool. And we went, and I was thinking about that actually just on my way here. I'm like, it's so funny, like thinking of a sport that I don't, like the first time I saw a game, I was like, oh yeah, there's no way I'm playing that because I didn't play ice hockey growing up. Yeah. So I would look, at, I looked at them and I was like, my god they're so fast and like their stick handling is awesome and that's a team that's a sport I could like never ever play so I was 18 the first time I saw a game joined a team and I've been playing for over 30 years same team that's amazing and I still can't stick handle very well but I can still run (laughs) okay so you're a runner too you're a marathoner right I have done half marathons half marathon that's amazing That's awesome. Yeah, and good. what did it take to do that? Like, what kind of mindset do you need to have? Because it's more than just the running piece of it. It's the mindset too, right? Um, it was the mindset. And it was just, I was, I had young kids when I started doing long distance running. And I needed something that was quick and easy. Like, literally, you need shoes. 
Right. Like you need good shoes, great shoes. And time, you just go. And often I would yeah. be literally racing, timing to the pickup of the bus in between like meetings, get, get a quick run in, get to the bus. Cause when they're little, like they can't get off the bus yeah. unless you're there. Right. Yeah. So that was, that was the motiv- motivator for me when I started um, and then to run quickly away from the bus when it was going to Exactly. <laughs> Free time! <laughs> Gotta go! Yeah. No. And then uh, my husband does, did an Ironman, so we got into That's a community amazing. of people doing playing that sport, which is a really amazing community, too. Um, so I started doing tri, which was a bit shorter distance, which was probably better for my almost six-foot frame. But Did you swim in a dark lake anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. No to problem. me, I think I could do it in a pool, that, that part of it in the pool. I don't know if I like the fact people swimming over top of me in the dark water. And kicking and... It's, yeah. You've it's got yeah, it would be yeah. The swim piece for probably 80% of the people who do try is, is the, the hard part. most fearful part. But yeah. yeah. Practice makes perfect. It's first, so you get it out of the way. Yeah. yeah. That's probably why they make it first, right? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the three of us, weirdly enough, met without knowing that we all met. So I worked with Lisa years ago on a not-for-profit with Lynette Rumble to help bring kindness into schools. So we kind of touched base that way. My sport background, I grew up in an immigrant home, like my parents, you know, immigrated from Italy, and they weren't really into sports at all. So for Mm -hmm. me, I like you and you, I learned to play everything in high school. I actually learned to play field hockey too, so we have to get on the field together. I've actually thought about going back to field hockey. Now, did they make extra long sticks for you? Because those nope. sticks were really, really short. Yeah. So that was Just my get low. intro yeah. into, into, uh, into field hockey. But I played everything. Like I was a generalist, soccer, basketball. You know, it didn't matter if I was short or not. It was just a welcoming environment. And then, um, so sport was kind of my way to burn off some of this crazy energy I have inside of me and to be social right so and I came when I came to Aurora I came here after living in Japan for a year and a half and didn't know a soul and I've lived here for 15 years um, and know tons of people now a good portion of them or my closest friends are my sport friends mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so for me hockey was my game and I never, like you, when you were talking about ball hockey, for me, like, I couldn't skate. I couldn't stop. I'd only ever worn those white, kind of hard, plastic, $12 Canadian oh, tire skates. skates. Yeah, yeah. Did Absolutely. you all own those? No, you always had hockey skates, right? No, actually, I uh, I skated for years on figure skates. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I just, okay. I mean, all I did was skate public skating. So you just, you just, you know... Was, you just had to keep up with the boys. That's all you had to yeah. do, right? Yeah. I didn't have boys in my family that skated, and I would definitely was a bender. Like, I could not. <laughs> no, I didn't go to I think I said the crow isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your ankles said go in. So I, one day, my all my girls were, both my girls were playing. My husband was playing hockey. My girls came over to the bench, and they were like, Mom, you're the only one in the family that doesn't play hockey. I'm like, eh. So that was kind of like, okay, well, you're set, you're going to be a role model, I loved watching the game. It was so fun. I'd totally gotten into it with my kids, like watching their games. So great example of how when your kids are active, they can influence you as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I started Never Too Late Hockey. It was a great program. And, you know, people, moms, it was typically moms or singles who had never skated before. It was such a great program, Kara McLeod and Heather Morning. Awesome program that's actually still running today. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I met Caroline. C'est moi. Because <laughs> I started to, I thought I'd moved to Aurora and, um, the kids had just, my younger one had just ed- entered, uh, grade one, had finished sort of the, the half day school at the time and went, okay, now's the time to kind of get out. I hadn't, you know, other than meeting at that point, I wasn't work in the working world. I'd kind of taken myself out because we were, moving around North America with with my husband's job and kids were little. So, you know, I thought, okay, I need to start meeting people and went and always wanted to play ice hockey, just had never played it. So again, so you had in. played like pond hockey, just not organized. Uh, I mean, I got a little bit, but it was mainly just street hockey. I just grew up playing street hockey. Man, you know how to skate. Well, that I was, again, when I met you, no, that I was, skate. that was the public skating. I mean, again, you know, when you're trying to keep up with the boys, yeah, yeah. and I don't mean my brothers, I mean the boys, <laughs> you got to keep up. Yeah. But 
you know, my crossovers are really good in one direction. They're not so good in the other. So cool. Anyway. But your soft hands, because you have very good hands for hockey. Thank you. Those were all like that was yeah. That was all ball hockey. Yeah. That was that was just through street hockey. Yeah. And again, I think That's so much too. of it is just <laughs> and I mean I played every I tried anything with a uh, a stick in a ball or a racket in a ball. That is for your me thing. my thing. So. And again, much like you, it's all all about strategy. I love strategy yeah. and, you know, all of that stuff. So, um, but I'd always wanted to try playing hockey. And then, so one of the, gal- one of the uh, girl guide leaders of one of my daughters, um, Kate, said, you should come out and play Never Too Late Hockey because that's where she played. And so I came out and I never looked back. I got. I, I awesome. went and bought all the equipment. It was my Christmas present. And started in January. Okay, you didn't get pink gloves because I got pink gloves for. No, Christmas. that was a like. No. <laughs> well, Hard no. Some people like pink. Gloves. It's just not me. Well, well, like pink's just not me. I know, and you know what? It was but very for those thought- who do love pink. It That's was a cool. very thoughtful gift for my husband, but when you cannot skate very well, having pink gloves to draw attention to your hands, maybe not the best best thing. But <laughs> I one. used them for many years, yeah. and they were like actually it's one of the girls had. The, it was awesome. She had these. Who was it? Esther that had those gloves. Oh, with fur her, gloves. Fur, she had fur. Oh, leopard. No, leopard, leopard fur gloves. gloves. It wasn't fur. Just That's leopard awesome. style. Leopard, Le- leopard patterned. Oh, yeah. They were awesome. Yeah. I just thought. I thought they were uh, sporty and elegant. In yeah. my world, that yeah. was. She yeah. was rocking it. Yeah, she was definitely rocking it. Absolutely. So, so we had coffee one day. Yeah. So fast forward, uh, probably four or five years. Um, the kids were getting older and. You know, I had been volunteering with a number of different agencies and kind of decided I, you know, wanted to get back into the world of sport and rec and had really spent, you know, as I moved around and lived in different communities and experienced different things, I kind of saw that there really wasn't a world, like anything for women to see themselves. So when I initially kind of created the idea of see what she can do, I thought I was going to create a magazine so that. You know, the see it to be it. And I, I love to take pictures. I was taking lots of action pictures of my kids playing sports. I was doing a pretty good job. That is a it. lot harder than it looks. I oh, have tried, sure. like, obviously, Caroline's our chief photographer, which is why when you come to our site, you see these awesome oh, photos. You. And the ones you don't see are the ones that are in the trash can that I went and took because <laughs> as much it. as you can, you can watch it and see it. I mean, I am getting better at it. Like, I'm learning. Yeah. But it takes a certain skill to oh, yeah. be able to catch that moment in time and those consecutive yeah. moments yeah. that really lead to capturing the moment. Right? Well, you know, it's funny. I've spent my whole life watching sport, playing sport. So for me, it actually kind of trained my eye That's yeah, to be that's uh, an action photographer. You anticipate yeah. the play. You anticipate yeah, well, where you it's going to go, yeah, right? Yeah, so I, yeah. Exa- that's exactly it. So I know I've, I'm learning. I don't, you know... I'm, I'm learning. She's very as I learn yeah, as, I watch, as I watch as I watch as I photograph new sports. Yeah. You you begin to learn. Okay, this is the play. This is where it's going to be. These are the shots, um, and then I also get a sense of, you know, as as I continue to shoot different, uh, shoot a particular sport, um, I start to see the see the shots that I want to capture. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so, so again, it was one of those, and I, I was turning 49 and went, okay, if I'm going to do this, invest in and jump off the cliff and, and give it a go. I and solve the problem. And solve the problem. Of change the trajectory. Change yeah. the trajectory. What was the problem you were trying to solve? Well, for, for me, the problem I wanted to solve was let's get rid of the bears. Let's create, let's shift the paradigm and... Instead of saying, why can't we? Let's start saying, this is what we can do. Let's let's talk about the do, and let's talk about it in a way that is, um, you know, in, um, all-inclusive. And, you know, it's about the do. We, you know, it doesn't have to be about what she looks like. Or, you know, it's about capability and confidence and... Just getting out there, giving it a go, yeah. right? And having, and, fun, playing and having fun playing. Yeah. So yeah. the big, so the kind of the most recent rally women, uh, the rally report that was released by um, Canadian, Canadian Women in Sport. Women in Sport yeah. You know, is talking about that trend that you studied twenty years ago and how girls are dropping out at the teenage years at three times the rate of their 
you know, their male counterparts. Yeah. So, and younger. Yeah. Well, at a younger and, age, and younger it used to be 12. Age. Like, yeah. even yeah. my daughter, I would see a drop-off at 12, and I, oh, it breaks yeah. my heart. And now yeah. to hear that it's getting lower is, like, heartbreaking, right? Well, exactly. and, and, you know, some of the research, the research that I was able to do with my, with my, my graduate research really was, uh, was cutting edge in the sense that it was, be- it was one of the first studies that looked at gender differences, and I happened to pick two stereotypical sports, hockey and figure skating, but the research itself began the conversation on, you know, maybe there's different motivations that yeah, that are in play yeah. in terms of what the consumer experience is, what the purchase, uh, purchasing decision, if you will. Yeah. And, and, you know, what are the key, what are the motivating factors? So, you so know, Sheila Croxon, actually, we were at a great, um, the Child of Aurora ran a mm-hmm. really great webinar. Mm-hmm. We were all actually listening on yeah. it. It was fantastic. But Sheila Croxon, three-time Olympian, was she uh, spoke, artistic uh, swimming coach. Oh, she she spoke so beautifully about the differences in how um, you know why girls stay in sport and why boys do. And you know, one of the things she had said was, you know, girls and even getting into it and even getting into it. Yeah. right. So one of the things she had said was, you know, girls start by getting into it because of the relationship piece of it. Mm-hmm. Then they build you know their skills and capabilities and confidence, and then they start to excel. Whereas, you know, boys will come in and, you know, start to play, build their skin, their their skills, and then become part of the community. So it, it, ne- neither of those things are bad or good. They just are. Yes, yeah, just a yeah. yeah, just differences. Right? You know, it's having... And that's not everybody. I mean, everybody's different. I'm sure there are individuals yeah. for boys that, you know, crave community first sure. and for girls that crave whatever sure. it is. Competition first. and performance yeah. first. Absolutely. So, but from a general sense, yeah. or at least... That's what the research would suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, how can, and then, you know, just to step back, you know, when we, originally when we sat down for coffee, yeah. it was amongst all our hockey peeps. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to start this, this idea and put it out into the universe, let's throw it out to people who I feel safe yeah. in. So uh, in my world, it was the ladies that I play, my hockey sisters. And uh, said, what do you guys think? And it was a two-page document. It had some pictures. It had some writing. <laughs> and threw it out there. On a napkin. Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> Coffee shop if you talk to my wonderful friend, Maggie B., who has been a wonderful friend for so long, you know, we, we would, we kind of, our, our journeys followed us in different ways. We ended up being in the same cities or we crossed paths in weird and wonderful ways. And so every time we would, you know, plan a meeting to connect in however way we came together. It always, you know, we always spent time talking about this idea and it would be, I can give you the stack of napkins yeah. I have, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Maggie would be the first to tell you that. And uh, so you, that is how the idea started. So the so idea is to get, right. so see what she can do. The idea behind it is to break down those bar- barriers, get more women and girls playing, participating in sport at all levels, whether that's yeah. you know, recreational, and whether it's elite, whether it's as a coach or an official or a player or whatever that may look like, exactly. because we know the benefits of sport are huge. Yep. Yeah, and I think also just to make it, you know, to give women and girls a place where they feel a sense of belonging, yeah. a sense of connectedness to yeah. sport, and then for those, for everybody who's supporting the women and females in their lives who who you know, want to support them in their in their journey to be in sport. It, it allows them to be a part of the community yeah, too. Because I, I, you know, from for me in, in particular, you know, Mark, my husband has been, you know, a phenomenal um, uh, partner in helping me make sure that's an important part of who mm-hmm. I am and mm-hmm. my day, and also been an important played an important role in making sure our girls have a great experience yeah, in their sport, absolutely. whether it's been through being a coach or giving them encouragement. Or um, doing things with them. And doing things with them yeah. and showing them how he supports me, yeah. like walking and walking, walking yeah. the talk. And quite often, I don't know, if you, do you find the same thing? Like, that's a way to connect with your kids For when, sure. they, when they're no longer interested in connecting yeah. with you. And, the, yeah. and I think... I hear I'm listening to you talking and we're twins so we all like to talk at the same time <laughs> um what's amazing though and what I love about the site we're two years like we celebrated two years this yeah. year 
um, is like the stories that are shared are, as you said, it's an array of people of all different athletic abilities. So yeah. you can find a story that resonates with you today, wherever you are in yeah. your journey of life, sport, for sure. right? Like you may yeah. be someone who's trying, is discovering running for the first time and you get on and you read a story about someone who actually hates the first 10 minutes of the yeah. run every yeah. single time. Yeah. Like, Why would you do it if you hate yeah. it every <laughs> single time? But yeah. then they go, well, but after the 10 minutes, it's actually, it's pretty, actually pretty awesome, right? <laughs> so th- that's what I love about the platform is the sharing in the community and the stories because you can connect with people. So, okay, what is your favorite What's your favorite story on the site? Or what's your favorite interview or your experience? Oh, and what's that's my not just favorite? on the site and just in our community as a whole. I think it's really hard to pick one story. Yeah. Because okay, there are so many. Some good ones that you I think I think this year we've participated in Ella and we've had some new members come on board. Yeah. Um, Gail is so fantastic. Yeah. Um, we're on a little monkey. Um, some physiotherapist folks and yeah. just different people yeah. who yeah. are so not necessarily just the athletes right it's the people that support them and keep them active or actually encourage them to engage and try something new or yeah and kind of approaching things much like what we are like we want to make a difference in the lives of women and you know they're wanting to lift women up too and so you know there's there's common ground right from the get-go in terms of values and um you know mission statements etc right so on the site we have just so people who've never been to our site before so we've got see what she can do yeah see what she can do.com uh we have content so all sorts of great stories Mm -hmm. um whether those are interview stories or stories that people have submitted on their own we have this great online business directory where where organizations sport providers anybody in our world that kind of serves the needs of active yeah. women are there and you can find them and you can talk to them and you can learn things about them um, we've got you know municipalities we've got like you know media organizations but then we have like small mom and pop shops we've got healthcare pros you know you were talking about run little monkey they make yeah. gear running gear um you know, best darn t-shirt you're ever gonna wear yeah, yeah. Um, and then the third aspect are our groups and events where you can kind of organize stuff. Now, a lot of it's virtual, but, you know, it's opening way back up to, you know, in-person meetings because we know we need to find the people to be yeah. able to do stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a lot of what kind of um, in in sort of the, 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 the ideation of all of this, you know, having moved around from location, from community to community, whether it was out west or in the United States or even within Toronto and then coming here to Aurora, uh, it's really hard. The challenge is, is if you want to try something new, you have to figure out how do you find out who to talk to yeah. to get into a new community, yeah. um, whether it's within the world of sport or whether it's within the neighborhood you happen to live in. Uh, so for me, it, it, you know, and having been in, the, in the, del- the delivery of sport programs and running a provincial sport organization, you know, we were really good at speak, speaking to our existing members, mm-hmm. but we, we often found it challenging to find new channels to talk to right. potential new members. Well, and I mean, let's be real, as we as our lives change, like whether you're single, just graduated school, That's right. or you're, Absolutely. you've just had a baby, or yeah. you're aging, you're, you're retiring, like we need and want different things, yeah. right? So what may be great for you now may change in a few years, and then how do you find that community? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, and you're, you know, you, you just, ebb, we all ebb and flow, and yeah. that's okay, right? Yeah. You know, again, and knowing that sport, in in my mind, you know, sport is about a continuum, and you can, you, you may be really good at something, and you may not be so good at something else, but we all kind of fall in but it that, brings you joy. But it brings you joy, yeah. right? And and you know, it's it's about figuring out where that fit is, and then you know, let's go and see what it, see see where it takes you. Okay, so I want to talk about my favorite my favorite stories. Okay, okay. yes, I'm going to tell you mine too. Okay, okay. I I mean there are so many, like you said. I yeah. mean, how do you even you know write write those numbers? But some of the early stories we did, um, you know, we talked to. A young, you know, a photographer, Angela Ducat, she's from Aurora, and she did a whole project called the Note to Self Project. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that project? It, it was very cool. Yeah. It was like you write yourself, your younger self a note, and what would you tell them? Yeah. So there's a few athletes featured in that. That was really cool. Um, we just um, 
actually, uh, we just released a, a story about roller derby by Shaniqua, uh, her, the athlete in that, her name is Shaniqua, and Katie Murray wrote that, one of our, uh, one of our writers, and she covered, I mean, I had no idea, so the roots of roller derby actually go back to the time around segregation, and it was, um, that community was intended to lift people up. So there's actually, and it's a very diverse, really Physically cool Physically knock community. them down, but lift them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After you're done, you can lift them up. But it's yeah. such a cool story because, yeah. first of all, roller derby does sound very cool. It does. They've got all kinds of really, um, like, it's very athletic, but it's a very inclusive place. People who have beliefs across all belief systems are welcome in. So that, I thought that was really a really cool That's story. Cool. Kowalski Klein, is it Andrea? Uh, oh, no. Um, it's just in our most recent, uh, um, we just did a... I'm going to look it up while yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, look it up. And do, you tell do me, me your next one. Look it up, and it's our <laughs> most recent do- um, story. It's This week is National Coaches Week. Yeah. And so we, we've we uh, brought together some, some stories that we, uh, we wanted to sort of bring back and focus on, you know, the stories that we've told of women who've been engaged in, in coaching, um, well, Tina gets that story up so yeah, that she can other, remind what's me. What's your other one? Your other Which one? is well, timely. One it's it, timely though because of the Canadian Women in Sport, like the the report talks about the reduced numbers in terms of yeah. people signing yeah, up. We to, need yeah. to get more people. To on, we need more coach. women and girls. Yeah, in the leadership positions. But I think one of the things there's two two stories. One was about the launching of the Whitby Fire. Um, oh yeah, that ball was hockey. Great. Yeah. Uh, there are yeah. three gals: Tracy, Danielle, and. Um, Oh my gosh, my gray brain is is uh, Tracy's par- uh, partner, um, life partner. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting it. But um, can you, you know, look that up too? <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. But you know, you look at ball hockey. That's a great story. Exactly. And again, I I'm trying to remember all the details. But but really, what resonates with me is that you know, Tracy. Sadly, we've lost Tracy. She she she. She had a very short battle, or I'm not sure how long her battle was with with cancer, um, but we 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 lost her. They lost her in um, in the summertime, and I felt so honored to have Done told that. her story yeah. behind yeah. her yeah. passion and her commitment to supporting the the women and girls of uh, the Durham region to help create the 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 new ball hockey league. Yeah. Um, do you yeah. know, and what's amazing about the stories, and as they're written, which I think is kind of cool, is that they're very visual. Like, yeah. so we really are trying to step up around that whole notion that only four percent of media covers women in sports. So, like, you'll see photo blogs like that story in particular for ball hockey. Like, it's a great photo blog, yeah. and it shows kids of all ages and you know adults interacting. Yeah. Well, sport, and it shows right? Tracy being she was an, a coach. She was a uh, an official, um, uh, she, referee. Uh, she was she was a ref, official. She was a national level coach. You know, international level coach. Yeah, and just wanted to be able to create more opportunities for <laughs> women and girls to get in the game of ball yeah. hockey, and aspire to greatness. Okay, so we're going to write but, the names of our favorite articles in the show notes. So that people can Absolutely. follow them. Yeah. Um, I can't pick a favorite one. I know, but that's the problem. Like, you remember all the stories and all the people, and then you're like, I yeah. don't even know which one. Yeah. But they're all great. So yeah. come on over. There's something for everybody, right, yeah. to check out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, we've got uh, a podcast that we've just launched, and we're super stoked. Um, this is your chance to kind of get to know who we are, and you'll see a combination of, you know, two of us probably at any given podcast. Um, but let's talk a little bit about why we started it and how that's kind of a natural extension to our platform. I don't know, Lisa, do you want to jump in? I, I was just going to actually extend an invite, right? Like yeah. it's, we are, yes. obvi- as you can tell, <laughs> huge fans of storytelling yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's, those are the ways that you keep people active and engaged yeah. in sport, which we all, the th- we all believe so wholeheartedly in. Yeah. Um, so I was just going to sort of put out a call yeah. to say like, listen, if you got a story you want to tell and you want to join us on one of our podcasts, we would Come love on. to share your story. Yes. Um, buzz five, buzz com slash see what she can do. Thank you. Yeah. And let's, uh, let's give voice to what's going on in your world. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm a podcastaholic, so... <laughs> 
I would I would happily say I love <laughs> podcasts. And yeah, and I am a podcast alcoholic. So if there are podcasts that um, that are out there, we would love to have you on our show and showcase you, right? Because I mean, the more people we can get out there, the bigger the ripple we can make. Absolutely. You know, the more we can bring people into our fold and lift people up. Exactly. And there's just so much great stuff happening at, at every level of sport. You know, let's 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 just celebrate. Let's yeah. just highlight. Yep. Excellent. So we've got a few great podcasts coming up uh, down the pipes. Um, we're going to be talking to Jess Silver. Uh, and she is a she's an amazing woman who's uh, overcome all kinds of adversity, physical, mental, um, and is making a huge impact on people. She's just released a book. Yeah, her um, uh, memoir. Her called, memoir. Uh, Run. Yeah. It's uh, it's fantastic. I'm in the process of reading it now to prep for that uh, that yeah. podcast. So it's yeah. really cool. Um, and we've got all sorts of other guests that we've lined up to mm-hmm. participate Tell in our podcast. Me. Yeah, so Absolutely. that you know we can get to know what's happening in our community. The format of our podcast is a little different in that not only do we want to celebrate you know the active women and girls in our community, but we also want to you know showcase the great. Um, people and organizations that help them do what they love most. And even the products and services, right? Like yeah. Like the yeah. physiotherapists, like the people who keep people active. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. there are so many of them, and we notice that so much when everything shut down with COVID, and you're like, I can't get a massage, or, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I can't, you know, I need a new pair of shoes, I have holes in the fronts of my well, shoes. And, you know, funny enough, you know, one of the, the, the key takeaways when, you know, we listen to so many conversations and discussions around getting back to sport, yeah. you know, once we realized, you know, some of the, some of the limitations and the challenges around COVID, <clears throat> excuse me, is that, you know, it's really the three C's um, that kind of lifts up these, these efforts to get everybody back to play. It's collaboration, it's communication, and it's connectedness. Yeah. And really, that's a big part of what we're trying to do through the podcast is kind of yep. bring everybody to the table physically um, once, ideally. Hopefully once as you, much as we can. As much <laughs> as we can, but, you know, virtually in other ways. So, yeah. again, let's bring everybody to the table and let's see if, how we can work together to solve some challenges and uh, have some successes together. Awesome. Well, I think that's a wrap. It's been awesome to have the three of you uh, together today. Yeah. And we're looking forward to more shows. Excellent. All right. Awesome. Well, have a great day. Cheers. Okay. Okay.